Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwantner and welcome to Selling Power's Daily Report. Today we continue our conversation with Seth Godin, who is the author of The Dip, and we would like to know more about the strategies, particularly how to avoid mediocrity. Mediocrity is very common. It means being average. Average people are average. Mediocrity is for losers. The reason mediocrity is for losers is given the choice of five places to eat lunch, are you going to pick the mediocre one? Given the choice of five people to hire, are you going to pick the mediocre one? In fact, in our Google-fueled world where you have a choice of a million things for every topic, who picks average? Who picks mediocre? Nobody. So as a salesperson, you have a big problem because there's all this pressure on you to be average, all this pressure to have a bigger kit bag selling more items, all this pressure to call on more and more people, offering them more and more, to fit in, to wear the same clothes as every other salesperson, to show up the same way as every other salesperson, to make the same pitch, and be cheaper. And guess what? Nobody wins it cheaper except for maybe Walmart. That the big win is when you refuse to settle for average or mediocre, and you say, I'm going to give up 90% of what I could do. And here's an example. If I go to yahoo.com, there's 150 links on that one page. A couple years ago, if I went to Google.com, there were three. So Google lost all the opportunities to drive people to finance, to drive people to weather, to drive people to this, to drive people to that, and instead they did one thing. And so if someone said, where should I search? Even though the searches were very similar, everyone said, go to Google, because they stood out as opposed to being in the middle. And I talked about this a little bit in Purple Cow, but this takes it further. In Purple Cow, I said, the only way to win is to be talked about because you can't advertise your way, you can't spam your way, you can't call your way into a presence. You get there because by people talk about you. But no one talks about, oh, I know this really average carpeting salesman. Never, right? What they talk about is the barefoot carpeting salesman who doesn't wear shoes and here's why and let me tell you about what happened when I bought something, blah, blah, blah. And that spreads the word. Well, what you do for a living if you're a salesperson is not take orders because they can outsource that or put it on the web. What you do as a salesperson is not bother people into buying from you, because that's not a scalable strategy. What you do as a salesperson is you communicate emotion. But you can't communicate emotion and trust to someone if they're not listening. And the only people who are going to listen to you are the people who were pre-sold on you, because someone told them about what you do and how you do it. At what point in your life did you make a decision that, that medi mediocrity is not for you? Well. I've been through lots of dips, more dips than the average bear. And so writing the book was pretty easy in terms of using my own personal experience. But you know, I can tell you, I, I started my blog about five years ago. If you type Seth into Google, you'll find it. And along the way, people have said, why don't you have Twitter? Why don't you have video? Why don't you have a podcast? Why don't you have comments? Why don't you have this? Why don't you have that? And there's lots of things I could have done. And if I had done those things, I wouldn't have had the blog I have today. But by saying, this is all I'm willing to do. It's going to be just this, once a day, me and my voice, and I'm not going to pay attention to the way other people are telling me a blog is supposed to be. You don't have to like my blog, but it's the only one that's like it, as opposed to trying to make it like everybody else. How many people visit your blog? More than I can count. I actually don't spend a lot of time looking at the numbers, because then I spend all my time trying to make the numbers go up. And my goal isn't to have the most popular blog. My goal is to have my blog, to be whatever I, I need it to be in that moment. And so I've forced myself not to study the stats. I do know Technorati says I'm the 12th most popular blog in the world, which is fine. I'll, I'll take it. Um, and it's growing. But what I'm really focused on is what kind of email do I get? Do I get an email from people who say, yeah, I'll look at your blog every once in a while? Or do I get an email from people who say, I've been reading it for six weeks, and look what I changed in my life. Thank you for inspiring me to do that. And that's what gets me out of bed to do it every day. So. How do you go on that road of improvement when you're already successful like you are? There isn't just one dip, Gerhard. It's not like, let's get through that dip and we're done. Steve Jobs helped invent the personal computer, helped launch the graphical interface, helped launch the MP3 business, helped launch computer animation at Pixar. He's not done, right? The point is, just like skiing, the goal is not to get to the bottom of the hill. The goal is to have a bunch of good runs before the sun sets. And so what great salespeople do is not get through one dip and say, I'm done, I'm going to the beach. They look for the next dip, because that's all life is, is a series of dips. That's why we're here, to go through the dips. 
Well, thank you, Seth. We're going to continue our conversation with Seth Godin, and tomorrow he will tell us all about the things, the neat things that he sees on the horizon on how the Internet is going to change us even more. Thank you.